I've often said that I feel like I'm living in a science fiction film, and I do. And there are some issues that I'm genuinely lost for words. And before I start this video, I'm going to be careful with what I say because I don't particularly want to be kicked off YouTube for this. But I simply have to respond to this. And I'm going to laugh through this video as well because it's my natural reaction to this. I'm totally and utterly bewildered by it. And just exhibit A in, in, in science fiction, uh, living in science fiction. Below I will link to, a, to two videos. The first one is with Piers Morgan and Susanna Reid interviewing a person from the from the United States who how do I describe okay let's let's start with the the basics the, the background we've got a, a three adult household with two children and uh, the person who is female this is uh, how I risk getting into trouble but biologically female identifies as non-binary and has two partners Luna who also identifies as non-binary and Bren who identifies as female. Now Piers Morgan asked was Bren born female um, to which the re response came yes she's a woman I'll bet my last penny it's a man. Um, but in any case, I, I want you to watch this. I want you to watch this. And I want, I, I just don't know what to say. I, I, I genuinely don't know what to say. It's, it makes me laugh. It horrifies me. Um, and we could, we could dismiss this as eccentric, you know, and, and, and a family of eccentrics, we live in a free country, can live how they like, but that's not what this is. We're not dismissing this as, as, a, as a, a, a few eccentrics. Uh, this is in school, uh, this is disagreement with this or, or uh, a failure to, a re refusal to buy into it can amount to uh, a criminal offence, or at least according to the police, um, who will threaten arrest or even make arrests for misgendering uh, or, or for calling into question the whole non-binary thing. So if it was, if we could dismiss it as a fringe eccentricity, then that would be okay, but we can't. Uh, and what this person is teaching her children which like I say is her own business but what she's teaching her children sorry what they are teaching their children minefield wait for it it gets better what they are teaching their children is being taught to your children at school uh, and I want you to to keep that in mind here in the UK in 2020 your kids are being taught these things as a matter of fact at school and are being encouraged to explore their gender identity. Right, so th that's the, the, the domestic setup of the person in question. Three parents for a multi-adult family with two kids, <clears throat> one a one-year-old baby and one an eight-year-old non-binary. Uh, the baby's also non-binary. But I, I've Throughout this, I'm gen this is genuine, I'm genuinely lost for words with this, I just don't get it. Now, just as the as trans is a very, very different from gay, this is also very, very different from trans, because trans is one thing. Trans is a man wanting to be a woman or a woman wanting to be a man, or, or wanting to change, you know, it, alter their bodies and, and alter their dress or whatever it may be to that of the opposite sex. So that's that's one thing. But this is something completely, completely different. This is uh, this is an invention. Uh, this has just been created, from what I can tell, out of thin air. And it is, it presents itself as a way of challenging gender stereotypes. But what it does is stereotype gender in a way that is so extraordinary and quite fitting for actually for the upside down world that we live in 
What it does is say that a girl can't play football because if she does, she's not actually a girl and should identify as something else. A demi-girl, I'll get to that in a minute, is one suggestion. Um, and if a boy doesn't like playing football, he isn't necessarily a boy. He, he can identify as, as a, a demi-boy. So, in the name of, of, of giving ch liberty to children, it is telling children to box themselves in, give themselves a label, uh, and this all in the name of, of challenging, stereotyping and labelling. It's just so incredibly bizarre that I, I'm saying, you know, and I begin, you sort of think, I mean, is it me? Am I the problem here? I don't get this. I do not get this. But let me, what I did was I, I watched the interview with uh, Piers Morgan and Susanna Reid uh, and then I watched another video, a half hour long video with the same person, the same parent, um, to get a better idea of the, the thinking behind all of this. Right, so what I did was I, I took a, a pad and pen, uh, because I still use a pad and pen, and wrote down some of the quotes. Now these are just, these are quotes taken from this interview. And I think uh, they should tell you all you need to know, really. I, 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 well, at least they should demonstrate to you my utter bewilderment. And I'm totally genuine about that. I am bewildered by this. And I'm so glad I'm the age I am. Because when I was a kid, I played with whatever toys I wanted to. Nobody, nobody tried to tell me what to play with and nobody uh, it, it was just so much more relaxed and and children certainly weren't reflecting on their gender identity whatever that is right so the kids in this family as i say one year old sparrow and eight year old hazel now hazel at the age of four <laughs> this is the bit where i laugh hazel at the age of four uh and i quote articulated a desire for they them pronouns <laughs> so um here's the here's a quote so uh, it, when when asked about hazel's gender identity uh this uh ari uh, is the name of the uh, it's, it's non-binary person woman uh said i did a sign because for the first four years hazel was a girl and her, what she said was, and I quote, I did assign binary pronouns to Hazel initially, yes. When they, but, yes, w when they were older, when they were older, I can't read my own writing there. So I'll give you the quote in full again. I did assign binary pronouns to Hazel initially, yes. When they were older, they articulated a preference for using they, them pronouns. <clears throat> when they were older, when they were four. So when they were four, they articulated a preference for using they, them pronouns, right? Um, when you were four, did you articulate a preference for pronouns? Did you know what articulate meant? Did you know what a pronoun was? Uh, the idea that this kid came up with this of their own volition is one of the things that I'm just so bewildered about. I can't help but laugh at this. Uh, one of her partners, as I say, is Bren. Sorry, one of their partners is, uh, was Bren. And uh, I, I've, I've already mentioned this one. Um, was asked, was she born a woman? Yes, she's a woman. Uh, and as I already mentioned as well, Luna, who is the other partner, is um, identifies as non-binary. And Ari, of course, also identifies as non-binary. So we've got a two non-binary identifiers and a... A woman identifier who I will bet is a man um, and two non-binary well not quite non-binary Hazel the older child is non-binary uh, and they articulated this at the age of four um, but Sparrow the one-year-old is and I quote again Sparrow is anti-gender which is a term that means before gender they don't have a gender yet so Sparrow uh, yeah, uh, Sparrow has has no gender yet, um, and uh, uh, yeah, this parent was asked what what this you know we're 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 in such an absurd situation that we're actually asking 
what genitals uh, a child is born with, uh, rather than asking if it's a girl or a boy. But anyway, uh, another quote. Hazel decided that they were non-binary when they were about four. They had been exploring gender before that. Yes, well, it's normal for a three-year-old to explore gender, isn't it? Trying on different pronouns, experimenting with different names, but then they picked they, them pronouns and chose the name Hazel when they were four. Asked about whether it was confusing for the child to have to explain all of this. Uh, we were told that no, they, they enjoy engaging with their peers uh, and having these conversations. Uh, and in response to, you know, just how do you explain, how do you explain this? How do you, you know, how do you explain this? And, and, and we were told, uh, what we, we don't know Sparrow's de gender yet. They're going, this is how they explain it. So if somebody asks, is, is, is your baby a boy or a girl? They will answer with this. We don't know Sparrow's gender yet. They're going to tell us when they're older. And then this is dismissed as it's a two sentence conversation. Uh, you know, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Uh, okay, okay, maybe it's me. Maybe I am missing something. Maybe there were classes that I missed on this because I am just blown away by it. The uh, overall parenting philosophy is, and I quote, I will follow the child. So the child will uh, decide what, what they are and, and how to be referred to. And, and um, so uh, also uh, the, uh, this person accused Piers Morgan, uh, and this probably was the first time he's been accused of this, but of childism. Uh, and childism is uh, the, and I quote, the normalization of the mistreatment of children because they're young. Uh, well, I would call, I would say that abuse is the, that mistreatment of children is, is, is a very wide ranging uh, umbrella, but I don't believe it includes telling a boy that they're male and telling a girl that they're female. I don't include. I don't believe it's it's abusive to live in the real world. That there are two sexes. One of them is male. One of them is female. And if you really want to challenge stereotypes, and if you want your kids to be able to do what they want regardless of their sex, don't give them a list of of non of made up so called genders to pick from. Tell them you're a girl, but you can still do whatever you want in life or you're a boy but you can still do whatever you want in life you, we, I, I will love you and support you why are you giving them this list well, and the idea that the children come up with this themselves is such a it's 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 a it's a, really it's a darkness it really really is it's an insanity um and that's the only word that really fits for me but uh, just a couple of quotes from the um because I don't want this video to go on for too long. It's been longer than I intended already. But just a couple of quotes from the second video, the half-hour interview um, that I mentioned at the start. And this quote stands out for me. And this is something that the eight-year-old Hazel said to her parents, having identified as a non-binary demigirl. Um, a demigirl is someone who feels a bit like a girl, but not quite like a girl I don't know what that's supposed to mean I don't know what it's supposed to mean to feel a bit like a girl and I, I just don't get it so this this parent was elated when the child came out with this sentence I'm kind of a girl and I'm kind of a person a girl is a person a girl is a female person a boy is a male person what the 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 idea that the the parent the parental response to that is not to say well a girl is a person you're both a girl and a person but to say oh you might be a demi girl then and then the kid was yes that's it that's what I am I'm a demi girl um another quote and I love 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 this one <laughs> this is one that I actually I was still laughing when I was writing it down. Speci the quote, Sp this is from the parents. Specifically, we didn't want Sparrow to grow up in an environment devoid of gender 
To which the, the interviewer says, Should be, because that's not real life. And uh, to which the parent responds, yeah, it's not real life. We want, their, we want them to experience all genders. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, yeah, we, you know, male and female, that's not real life. Um, we <laughs> can't possibly not be in the real world. Therefore, we must experience all genders, you know, to be in the real world. Uh, my favourite quote of that interview was, and I, and I quote her directly, there's no way that this can go wrong. No way at all. Uh, finally, finally, this is, this is my last one. Um, but when, when talking about how Sparrow the baby is going to explain all of this when, when they get older, um, we were told about Hazel's time of, of explaining this in, in explaining this to, to peers and friends, etc. And I quote, even when Hazel was not out at school, remember Hazel is eight years old. Even when Hazel was not out at school as being non-binary, there was a while, this is a side, a sort of a side sentence, there was a while when they just did not want to do that at school. They only wanted to do it at home. So basically they weren't out at school. They were only out as non-binary at home. Uh, they still had to be like, and, and then uh, the kid explaining, oh, well, so this would be the kid explaining who Ari is. Oh, well, that's Ari. Ari is my papa, not my mama. This, uh, this, I, I genuinely, I genuinely, genuinely am so, so blown away by all this. I don't get it at all. I don't get why we are indulging this. And I don't get how we've gotten to the point just so, so quickly where all this stuff was invented and then it was immediately mainstreamed. It is being taught in schools, as I said, but the NHS is rallying around this. The NHS is allowing self-identifying trans women into women's hospital wards. Prisons are allowing self-identifying trans women into women's prisons. We have a mayor of London who is on Twitter legitimising the concept of non-binary, saying all gender identities are valid. We have leaders for the Labour, the uh, contenders for the Labour leadership, all of them completely on board with this and they will all push for criminalization of everything that I have just said. This is so it's 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 ludicrous and it's funny, but it's deadly, deadly serious. This is a descent into totalitarianism. And actually, you know, the kind of transsexual that would have been around 50 years ago, not part of this fad, those transsexuals are being exploited and used uh, by radical re gender revolutionaries uh, to, to turn normal language upside down and to to make children, to turn children into adults. The idea that a child at the age of four is reflecting upon their gender identity uh, and deciding that they are non-binary. Where did, where did, why are we pushing this onto small children? Why are we telling children? And backing it up, by the way, the NHS uh, putting chemicals and hormones into children's bodies to change them at the behest of a child that has been deliberately manipulated and confused by this invention of a new language. I don't understand why, how this happened. The purpose of it, to my mind, from the individuals, the, the individuals who uh, think that themselves as non-binary or, or demi-girl or demi-boy or whatever this may be, to my mind, is we're dealing with a self-esteem crisis here. Someone who has to make a label up to affix to themselves in order to be special. They don't obviously believe they're special enough as they are. Uh, they need to, to assign themselves into a category, and, and preferably a category that we as a society have begun treating as victims and oppressed. Uh, and we all know that we want to be oppressed, don't we? Uh, victimhood is celebrated. Oppression, the oppressed... We're we, we we decide we're oppressed to get the celebration of the oppressed in society. It's weak 
uh, it's 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 really quite disturbing that we are enforcing this stuff with law and teaching it in school. So from the from the individual perspective, uh, I, I I think there's some serious self esteem problems going on here, that that ought to be addressed. And people need to understand that you don't you can be female without c carrying off a certain. You know we we are all individuals. And, and whilst men and women are different from each other and women share things in common and men share things in common, uh, we are at the end of the day all individuals and surely that's the message that has to be uh, sent to children and not here's a list of a hundred uh, identities, pick one. And the pressure the child is under to pick one and what do I pick? You know, this is, in, in, I, I, I genuinely, genuinely don't have the words to express my dismay. At, at all of this and the fact that it is so, so serious. Um, from a political perspective, why is this happening? Well, it's left-wing lev revolutionaries again. Uh, they want to turn society upside down. They want to get rid of truth and objectivity. They want to turn children into adults. As I said, I believe there's a, a paedophilic element pushing all of this stuff as well. Um, but they, they want the complete transformation uh, and they will not accept. You know, a, a lot of our politicians are weak and cowardly, as we know, but they are pushing this stuff without thinking about it, without understanding it, but because it will win them woke points. But more importantly, uh, it will avoid the wrath of the trans activist, uh, because the trans activists, and I'm not talking about transsexual here, I'm talking about trans activists, uh, they are extreme, extreme bullies. They're getting people fired from their jobs, destroying their lives because they won't go along with this charade, this utter insanity that intends to transform everything we know, uh, transform normality, defy biology. Uh, and in defying biology, you know, we are being compelled to pretend we believe what we know not to be true, to defy our own eyes and our own ears. It's the ultimate control of our thinking and of our speech. Uh, and that's another reason why politicians are happy to go along with this. Um, if you have any thoughts on this, uh, please, please do let me know. Uh, I shall read the comments below, but I, I do wonder, I do wonder sometimes, is it just me? Am I, have I missed something here? Uh, are you as confused and bewildered by this as I am? Because I truly, truly am. And the seriousness of it can't be understated. We have got to, as with so many other issues that are going on in this country, we have got to fight back and we have got to stand up for the majority in this country who do not want their children placed under pressure to pick from a hundred gender identities. Uh, it, it's it's an appalling, appalling imposition and abuse of our, our children and our school system and that the police are enforcing this with the threat of criminal records is is a is dissent, a dissent into a completely upside down, crazy, lost all reason society. And that's not a society I want to live in. And it's not a society I want to pass on to the children of Britain.